Major Ahmed has this report. Turkey has announced the closure of dozens of media organizations today as a crackdown continues following the failed coup on 15th July. Along with this, nearly 1,700 members of the armed forces, including 149 generals and admirals, have been discharged. And two of Turkey's highest-ranked generals resigned earlier today. Three news agencies, 16 TV channels, 45 papers, 15 magazines and 23 radio stations will be shut. Among them are Zaman newspaper, Samanyolu news channel and Kihan news agency, which have previously been accused of supporting the movement of Fatullah Gulen. Further details regarding the names of other media organisations have not yet been officially released. But local media suggests that while most are relatively small, Provincial outlets, several dailies and agencies with a national audience have also been targeted. Generals Esan Oya and Kamir Basuglu, who are both ranked Turkey's highest generals, stepped down ahead of a meeting earlier today. This came after a total of around 1,700 members of the armed forces were dismissed from the Turkish military as a result of their alleged connections to the Gulen movement. Last week, Erdogan issued another degree to close 2,341 institutions, including schools, charities, unions and medical centres, which are suspected to have connections to Gulen's movement. The Turkish army have also revealed that 8,651 members of the nation's armed forces took part in the failed coup, in which at least 246 people died. Since the failed coup attempt, 15,846 people, including soldiers, judges, prosecutors and civil service workers, have been detained. Of them, a total number of 8,133 have been charged. The closure of the media outlets and dismissal of the members of the armed forces were announced in Turkey's official Resmi Gazette. Last week, Turkey declared a three-month state of emergency, allowing the president and government to bypass parliament when drafting new laws and to restrict or suspend rights and freedoms. President Erdogan has vowed to purge state bodies of the virus he says caused the revolt. Khadija Ahmed, The Report. Joining me on the phone is barrister and chairman of the Dialogue Society here in London and a supporter of the Gulenist studies and ideology, Ozjan Khelis. Ozjan, welcome. Um, the numbers are staggering. Is this clampdown legitimate or have the purges gone too far? Um, well, I mean, firstly, it's important to note that obviously there was a failed coup in Turkey and, uh, you know, so many people died and this is a massive event in itself and it, and, and it needs to be considered as such. And, of course, um, a, a reaction from the state and from the government, uh, it, to a certain extent, is understandable um, and it is important that they, that they do what they can to root out the people that were behind this purge, behind this coup, rather. The problem, however, is, is that um, uh, the Turkish government appears to have decided who the plotters were uh, even before uh, they knew what was happening. On the night of uh, the coup, President Erdogan uh, phoned in to CNN Turk uh, two hours after the, two, uh, the coup started. And the presenter asked him, uh, sir, do you know where your chief of staff is? And he said he didn't know. They asked him had he met with his uh, head of uh, national intelligence services, and he said he hadn't. But even at that point, he knew uh, who the, the coup plotters were. So the, the, the problem is, is that he had already designated a convenient scapegoat for, for uh, his purge. And what he has since done uh, is, as you've, as you've mentioned and as mentioned in the report, a massive amount of people are being put into this, uh, uh, into this uh, the, the coup plotters bag and dismissed, uh, detained, uh, and in fact, Amnesty International have said are being uh, tortured, uh, uh, in some cases beaten, and even raped. Well, you see, that is, is not uh, the way that, 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 that this investigation should be conducted, and this does more harm to the Turkish government. This is not the way to root out uh, the coup plotters at all, and what it looks like is that they are, in fact, engaged in a purge of non-loyalists rather than coup plotters. Well, many uh, critics say that the coup was preempted and that these uh, responses are not entirely shocking. Um, 
I mean, I find that statement in itself shocking. I mean, um, as I said, it is understandable and it is the right and is you know, justice demands that whoever orchestrated this coup, uh, they are investigated, they are indicted, they are prosecuted and they are punished with the full force of the law. We have absolutely no issue with that and we support that. On the night of the coup, uh, the Hizmet movement uh, put out a statement condemning this coup very early on at, at, and throughout the night, a number of statements were made. So we have absolute support uh, of uh, the government in, in resisting the coup. We support the public and we are with them in resisting the coup. Uh, we have no issues there. And it, as I said, it is understandable and it is expected that they go after the, per the perpetrators. But when, you, um, when you've already decided who the perpetrators are, <laughs> while the coup is, is still underway, when you haven't had the opportunity to speak to your chief of staff, you haven't had the opportunity to speak to your head of national intelligence services, and you declare it on TV, the coup plotters are this group, well, that doesn't evoke a great deal of confidence in me. Uh, that suggests to me that you're simply putting out a scapegoat. And the reason I say that is not just the, not that particular night and the way that the president approached it. We know for the last three years, President Erdogan and his government have been using the Gulen movement as a scapegoat and blaming everything on, could, could, on this particular movement. Who else could have been involved in the coup attempts aside from the Gulenists? Well, I mean, you see, that's not the question. The question is, who else could have been, in, you know, not just aside from, the, because that assumes that the Gulenist movement or the Gulen movement are somehow culpable. What we need to say is, who did this? And that is, you know, who else has question. the capability? The, who else has well, the capability? <laughs> This is the Turkish military. The Turkish military, I mean, well, let's look at what Eric Zucker said. Eric Zucker is a Turkey expert, okay? He says that he believes it is the hardcore secularist. If you look at Gareth Jenkins, Gareth Jenkins is no friend of the Hizmet movement. He's very critical of the Hizmet movement, but he has extensive links within the military. In his article, he says he believes it's the hardcore secularist. That but the is. secularists have supported, come out and supported Erdogan. Well, if you fail in a coup, Tamina, um, what would you do? <laughs> would you declare your your elite, your uh, your uh, ideological uh, uh, alliance? Would you say so? If you fail in a coup, that's what happens. You obviously blame somebody else. Um, my point here is, I'm not saying to people, and I'm not saying to the government or anybody else, believe what uh, the movement is saying. I'm saying, if you are claiming that the movement did this. You have to demonstrate uh, uh, the investigation through which you came to that. And the problem here is, the, the massive problem here is, by doing what the government's doing, in other words, an indiscriminate purge of everyone, closing down 2,000 schools. I mean, what has that, what has a nursery in southeast Turkey got to do with the coup? They, they've closed down an Armenian uh, polyclinic, a small hospital that is owned by an Armenian Turk. What has that got to do with the coup? Uh, you well, know, what can what, be what, done what, to challenge this? If the evidence isn't being, uh, you know, being put forward in the public domain by the government, it's all circumstantial. What what can be done? It's, well, this is the problem. It's not just circumstantial. If it, it by by. It, what Amnesty is saying is, this is that they're saying we've, they've got uh, credible evidence that there is beating, there is torture. They're showing generals, military officers, and they're saying, for example, the aide of the chief of staff, they're saying that this man was a coup plotter. Fine. They're saying he wrote a handwritten confession, confessing that he was uh, a Gulenist. Okay. Uh, and they're showing photographs of this man. His right hand is broken, Samina. His left hand is broken. His ribs are broken. His face is have his face has so many bruises. His bruises have bruises. I mean, this is how bad he beat this man is. Why the haven't the Why haven't the secularists objected to this? Why haven't they spoken up? Ah, wonderful. Good question. Now, <laughs> right now, the narrative that Erdogan has created is so powerful. It's so powerful that anyone who says anything, for example, the, the main opposition party, if they object in any way, if they say, hold on, Mr. President, hold on a second, come on, you can't be saying this. The moment somebody objects, they're being presented as supporters of the coup. That's point number one. This is why nobody's able to say anything. Point number two is the secularists, and I'm going to give you a secret here, the hardcore secularists, they're not really fans of the Gulen movement, because the Gulen movement, Hizmet, are pious Muslims, 
okay, who have been discriminated against uh, by the military, by the secular establishment in Turkey for decades. So the fact that Erdogan is now beating this movement of pious Muslims... However, the they, are, they are secularists and all for free uh, speech and openness and civil, liberty, uh, civil liberties. Of course. Of course. But th that's the point that we should raise to them. Why are they not objecting to the fact that the people that are being detained and arrested uh, are being mistreated? Apparently, I, I have to update my figures, but um, as of two days ago, seven people have committed suicide in, 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 the, in these detention centres. My problem is, one, this is a massive problem. I mean, why are, why are people being allowed to commit suicide? But two, the people that are committing, uh, supposedly they're committing suicide, these are people that uh, are witnesses. For example, there was this man that was caught who was a, a, allegedly a police officer who had a, a, a military uniform on, right? Okay, so this is an important lead. This is an important piece of evidence. If I were the government, I would keep this man under 24-hour supervision. I take everything away from him because I need this man to prove my case. This man allegedly committed suicide and he's dead now. So this is the problem. The government is not interested in producing evidence. The government is undermining the judicial process, and this is preventing us from understanding who organized this coup. And what about the dossier sent to the U.S. Uh, regarding and requesting the, uh, uh, you know, the Gulen to be um, extradited? Well, Samina, this is, I mean, uh, for the past three years, I was under the impression, based on what my president Erdogan was saying, that they had sent this dossier months ago, years ago, because he's been saying to us, I w I've, asked for, uh, I've asked Obama to give Gulen back to us. He, why are they not giving them back to us? So what we found out now is actually they haven't made an extradition request. They've recently sent some dossier. And let me tell you what James Clapper has said. James Clapper is the head of the U.S. Intelligence, National Intelligence Services. This is the man with his finger and his thumb on the intelligence. He said he doesn't believe that Gulen is, uh, the Gulen movement is behind this coup, and he said that the dossier that they submitted does not amount to a formal extradition request. So my issue is, please, let's not be so believing in politicians. However, is that, would that, can that be considered as a delay in tactics? That's a, you know, it's, uh, for, from Erdogan's point of view, um, he may want to, he may want uh, Gulen to remain in the United States because that gives the impression that the United States is supporting Gulen. And there is uh, he, the Labour Minister of the AKP party said the United States is behind this coup. Two news, two or three newspapers, Yeni Shafak being one of them yesterday and today have come out with front covers saying the United States is behind this coup. So it may be, I don't know, it may be the government's tactic to say, actually, let's delay it. Let's not put in a formal request. Uh, and let's make it look like the United States is supporting Yulan because that uh, uh, works in our favor. We have to be, what the main thing is, let's please look at evidence. What is the evidence? Okay. What is the investigation? Uh, rather than trusting uh, what politicians are saying or what this part is saying. I want to just talk about the two high-ranking generals that have stepped down in protest. Can we see or can we expect further resignations to come? I, 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 I honestly don't know. Right now, what's coming out of Turkey, um, who is doing what, for what reason are they doing it? We have to understand everything is still unclear. For example, who is the coup leader? Who is the leader of this coup? We don't know still. We still don't have... Uh, the chief of staff says that he was detained uh, by the coup plotters, and there's three or four people in that room. Each of them has given contradictory statements. Well, what's quite so, interesting about this coup attempt is that generally, whether there's a, uh, previous coups in Turkey or internationally, you know, whether they've been successful or failed, there's always been somebody, a face that has come out, has been the obvious leader. For this, there's, there's none of that. There's no yes. obvious leader. But isn't that appropriate? Isn't that convenient now? Because there's no face, so why don't we just say Gulen did it? And this is an old man in his, you know, approaching his 70s who has multiple conditions. He has heart problems. He has diabetes and so forth, all the way in Pennsylvania. So we are to believe, come on, we are to believe that the strong, powerful Mr. Erdogan in Turkey could not 
um, could not prevent this, but Fethullah Gulen, all the way in Pennsylvania, could orchestrate it. Okay. This is what, this, my, my point is, there was a coup. I have no doubt about that. This is a very bad thing, and we condemn it, but we need to please investigate it and not just accept the narrative that's, that we're being told. Ozan, many thanks. There we